much. I forgot. <laughs> I have been in <laughs> my work for too long. <laughs> okay, uh, my presentation and my paper is about virtual numbness where past and present intersect. So, uh, it is uh, almost in the same direction of the uh, presentation that I have in the morning. So, uh, sometime I can skip some of the slides. Okay. Uh, we have to have one overview of beta madness, uh, a brief overview on beta madness or Jerusalem. Uh, it is an important uh, location. It is, uh, the geographical location of this land is really unique. It is between three continents. Uh, so. I don't know, but then I can show you. So this is the Jerusalem between Africa, Europe, and Asia, and even the Central Asian country. So you can see through this land and this land. So it is connected with all continents. It's a very important location. And uh, on this sea road also, you can see that here we have a Mediterranean Sea, and then uh, we have Red Sea. So the accessibility, whether through land or through uh, water, it's really unique place. And if even today we have a flight, it is the center. It's like a circle of the world. So it is a really important uh, location. Uh, it is uh, significant for Muslim. It is significant for uh, Christian and Jews, as we explained I think, in the morning also. The theme of the past and present intersection um, is uh, the whole history is a still playing, war, uh, playing role in today's uh, Palestine or today's Jerusalem. So it has a long uh, and a strong history and identity. So it has a uh, historical identity and through a history also Beit al Maqdas created many identity for itself. So its city is still creating more and more identity and adding to the richness of uh, culture and civilization. And uh, it is a political, a com uh, commercial, religious, and historical fault line. Fault line normally influence not only the region, but the entire world. Today you can see in Gaza, when something happened there, it's not only will give a shock in the Muslim world, in Africa, in Asia, it's the entire world will be under the impact of anything happen over there. So uh, from the historical, it, 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 uh, the reason is historical, cultural, and religious and also other interests like a political interest, like trade interest and financial interest. So many interests is there and also uh, security. So it is very important place. The discovery of uh, rich energy resources recently also, it uh, even give more uh, value to the uh, Jerusalem and around Jerusalem, that means the Palestine and other places. So today, anyhow, I don't want to go more than that. So it is very important location, and from other point of view also, it is very important. 
Today, uh, you know that we have uh, corridors. And in last uh, conference in, uh, in uh, India, uh, it is proposed, this one, against the corridor which proposed by uh, China. One, ro one road, one belt. So that is, this is the opposite of that uh, plan. So you can see that still uh, we have from India, India the economy is uh, in fact uh, these days flourishing. So from India it comes to Arab country and then goes to uh, Mediterranean region. So to go to uh, Israel and then uh, Mediterranean region. So it is very, today also it became very important issue and uh, it's under the competition these days. These plans, these corridors are competing each other. So it's, it also creates uh, more interest. Importance of Beitul Maqdas for Maqdas for uh, Judaism. This is a promised land. It is not only Jerusalem. The whole uh, area, sometimes region, they say from uh, from river to the another river in Furat. So it is a huge area. It is uh, it is believed uh, the Jewish believe that it is a promised land. So. Uh, it is important for them. The connection to the, um, uh, the end of the world, that means the uh, God will come again and take the Jews and save them from all the problems that they have. So this promise, that means the end of the world, and uh, that is also another uh, belief that normally Jews have, and Christians also believe in the end of the world. And Muslims also believe, but anyhow, in Bible, it is uh, reported from the Jewish point of view. Western wall, also it is very significant for Jews. Many other places also, it's, it is the most important. Otherwise, there are many other places in Jerusalem and in other places that they are sacred for uh, Jewish people. Uh, the, place of, of, uh, the place of temple, which it is uh, under the dispute these days. So that is also a very sacred place for them. So it is, uh, from this point of view, it is uh, important for Jewish people. For Muslim people, this is also again sacred place. Sacred place. So uh, the second chosen place for worship on earth, according to some, uh, uh, some uh, rabayat and some saying, uh, this, oh, sorry. this is the land which we are talking. This they call it Haram al-Sharif, within the wall. All these, forget about the buildings, these lands is chosen, second chosen place for worship on the earth. That means according to some rabaya in, uh, and saying in uh, Muslim uh, narrative, when Adam has been, uh, has created, then he uh, came to the other earth, God chosen two places for him for worship. One is uh, the Kaaba in uh, Mecca, in Mecca area, that is the mosque, Masjid al-Haram, sacred mosque. And second place for worship is Haram al-Sharif, this, the land. The land is masjid. Masjid in, in Arabic, it is masjid, in fact, that is place of worship, place of worship. So not necessary to have a building, the place where you pray, that is the worship place. So land is sacred place for Muslim. Uh, forget about the two mosques that we have, mosque or building that we have there. The land itself is sacred place for them. Second chosen place for worship. First one is Kaaba Makkah, first place for worship for Adam, introduced to Adam. Second is that one. 
So it shows that Muslims, even before Solomon and David, David, before David and Solomon, they talk that this place was worship place for Adam. That means the first man. So it is very important for Muslim, and it is also land of prophet and land of revelation. Because Muslim believe in all the prophets with Jewish and Christian belief. They believe that they are prophet of God, and the, this land is land of revelation and land of prophets. And also it was first Qibla, the direction of prayer for Muslim, first one. After that, only became Kaaba and Mecca become the direction of prayer. So it is very important for Muslims. For Christian also, this is also another important why it is important. It is the from the place that Prophet Muhammad had his divine journey to heaven. So this. This is the, this building, it is in fact commemorating that journey. It is the, in the commemoration of that uh, journey, uh, the uh, Abdul Malik, the Bani Umayyad uh, king, he built this mosque, this uh, play. This, it's not a mosque, it is a building. So that is also another uh, reason why it is important for Muslims. For, Jew, for Christians, in fact, it is the place of crucifixion, place of burial ground for, uh, for uh, Jesus Christ, and also resurrection place. And Jesus also, anyhow, born there, and uh, anyhow, he had lived there, and all the street and maybe the environment is a sacred place for Christians. It has also, since Christian also believe in Bible, Old Testament, so the Masonic uh, tradition also again is important for Christians. So if we have all these things, you can see why this place became uh, uh, these, the uh, it became a challenge uh, prob uh, and problematic area because all of them believe in the sacredness of the place and everybody wants that place, the, the city and the important uh, uh, sacred place, they want it for themselves. So it creates problem for all of them. So, so the history and belief today is still existing and creating problem. And it changed to political and religious tension, and especially for Jews and Muslims, they have very, uh, this, uh, very strong dispute on this land. In fact, uh, when we are talking about uh, dispute also, Maybe uh, many people think that this building is more important for Jews and for Muslims, but it is not like that. For Jews, it is important for them to get this land, this part, because it is next to the uh, Western Wall. So they want to destroy this one. So once also when they burn, they burn this one, this building, because it is next to that, and they say it is the exact place of first temple. So the dispute is coming here. It became religious problem and political problem. So problem is existing even today. What, how, how, how long do I have time? How many, how many minutes? Huh? Oh, OK. Thank you so much. Oh, I I have one jacket with me. <laughs> so today, in fact, uh, it is a very big issue uh, how to govern, especially the tourism, how to govern. Because uh, for Muslim and the Palestinians, they believe that 
This is the capital for them. That means it, if you have a, a, a Palestinian government, they, will, they want to have a capital in Jerusalem. And same thing the, uh, in, in Judaism also, in, uh, especially the, uh, when we are talking about the political issue, Zionism. Zionism, in fact, they believe that it should be their capital. So it is a big issue for them. From political point of view, the, we have evangelist, uh, evangelist uh, Christian. And when we say evangelist, in fact, they are two. They are, according the, uh, according their interpretation, we have different groups among them. Also, it, it doesn't mean that all of them believe that uh, Jerusalem should be the capital of uh, of Israel. All of them is not like that, but anyhow, those people who have more connection with, uh, with Zionism, they believe that they should have uh, capital, they should uh, uh, declare the Jerusalem as a capital for Israel. So because of that, you can see the Trump as a, one of the a strong, one of the strong uh, evangelists. When he was in power, he came to Jerusalem and he announced and also he declared that the uh, embassy of America, US embassy, should move from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. That means, officially, he wants to say that I am supporting that uh, this idea that Jerusalem should be capital for Israel, not, not Tel Aviv. This is the capital. So it is a big issue for Muslim because Muslim also see this sacred place for them, and Palestinian also think that this should, this is their capital. So it is a very big issue and political problems. Uh, from the international point of view, I will talk in the next chapter. We are going to talk about that. I don't go in that, but anyhow, uh, this move is against international law to announce that the, the Jerusalem is the capital of Israel because according to international law, Jerusalem should be, uh, not international law, according uh, General Assembly of UN, the Jerusalem should be international city and it should have a special government, uh, that means uh, administration. So not capital. So it will be, a, because it is shared, it is a shared in, uh, in heritage for uh, these three religions, so it should be international city. It should have a special uh, administration. So the, this move, that means to announce this uh, city as a capital, or a capital of uh, Israel, it is against the decision of uh, General Assembly and also the, uh, the Security Council. But anyhow, the move that they had that during the Trump, it was against some type of against international laws. So during that time, they have issued gold coins when he came and declared the uh, Jerusalem as the capital and also move the embassy to uh, Jerusalem, it, it, he became very famous. So today, if you want this type of coins, you can order from Amazon. You can get it. One giant promise to buy one for me. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see, we have two figures on this uh, and these coins, one is Cyrus, Kurosh. Because Kurosh is the, Kurosh and Cyrus is the savior uh, of Jews when they were in exile in Persia. At that time, Cyrus released them and liberated them from uh, slavery of Babylon. So he was uh, like a very important non-Jewish prophet, non-Jewish savior. So it has a very 
uh, important place in Bible and among the Jewish people. So this is the throne is the second Cyrus. It, because he is also savior. So because of that they honor him and uh, created one gold coin for him. So you can see that even today the, the history play a very important role. Cyrus, Bible, the reports, even connect with today Trump, evangelists, and political issue, and international law, and UN, and all these things. So it is very connected to each other. It became international issue, and very important religious issue, and political issue, and so it is a very big issue even today. In America, because they have uh, many uh, evangelists, they play a very role and they have very really influence also in uh, US government. So they play a very important role. Even in Gaza today, you can see we have a problem of Gaza. In Gaza, also you can see the involvement of uh, uh, US in the region. They have sent also troops uh, because Maybe if anything happened in other parts of the world, I don't think that they had this much of manual uh, uh, military, uh, you know, show. Uh, but about the Jerusalem, in fact, you can see that how much support they received from U.S. Because it is a religious, it is a political, it is also economical. You know, it is many issues also connected to this issue and historical and religious issues. They connected, connected to each other. Here, uh, Trump went gone to Jerusalem. He went to see also the West Wall. It became one of the big issue at international level. Uh, so, embassy, uh, the movement of embassy, moving embassy from Tel Aviv to uh, Beit Madness and. Also, the recognition of this place as the capital for Israel. These are the important issue for international, uh, and interna for international, international law and international relation. And also, it is political issue too. So, ongoing issue and response. So, whenever there is a uh, threatening issue against the uh, Haram of Sharif, there will be a response from the Muslim world, and there will be a big issue. Once they had a, a fire, one uh, Jew, very, uh, what is that, uh, extremist uh, uh, Zionist, maybe has gone and put under fire the um, masjid, the mosque, and then the Organization for International Cooperation among the Muslim world, it, came in the existence to respond to the destruction of the mosque. In fact, as I told you earlier, this mosque is more important for Muslim compared to the, that golden uh, tomb. Because this mosque, this is the place that uh, this mosque has built on the site of uh, the mosque that Omar first after the conquered the Beitul Maqdis. First, he, they, he made one musallah and mosque in this place. So still the Omar Mosque is there. So this mosque is very important for Muslim, more than that golden, and also for Jews also, because they say this is the place of uh, temple. So this is a big issue. More, but today when you see the, on the news mostly, they show the uh, golden temple. But that golden, in fact, is not, from the religious point of view, it is not that much important like this. Because this is mosque. Mosque also is more important in Muslim than any other uh, building. So recently, uh, also, we have, in the, when they had a Gaza problem, the Muslim leaders get together in uh, Saudi to uh, show their support, but it was not very strong support for the Hamas because among the Muslims also there is a division uh, to, 
about the, how to solve the issue, whether there should be a Palestinian issue, whether there should be two state, whether the whole uh, Palestine should belong to Muslims. So there are also division among the uh, Muslims, so they don't have, they didn't get very a strong uh, position even at that time. So, in fact, if you search in internet for film and action and reaction, you have more, but, but just I have to give you an example, I gave you some, uh, I show you some uh, photos, otherwise, if you like, you just search for the video and other things uh, to see how is the action and reaction is going on about the uh, Jerusalem and especially about the Haram al-Sharif, about the mosque, you can see, because here you can see, oh sorry, oh. It's, it seems that my uh, time is going to finish, huh? 10 minutes, okay, here you can see that uh, we have here uh, uh, the hardline uh, Zionists, they, are, they, are, they have announced one day for flag, so they try to conquer the Haram al-Sharif, which I showed you. They, they want to uh, conquer that. This is the, their wishes. They, they want one day to destroy the mosque and also build the uh, temple. The, so this is, the, uh, uh, this is the plan that they have. So whenever there is that day, that means that the Nakba day, that uh, Muslims are very sensitive. They say this is the day that uh, Zionists has conquered our land uh, that day, and also the day of uh, flag, which it is a national day in, in, in Israel. So they are very sensitive. At that day, normally action and reaction is too much, and it will be a, a very hot issue. And we have also, you can see, that some Jewish also they are against uh, against Zionism. They say Zionism is not Judaism. It is different from Judaism. So uh, not only uh, because these people mostly are traditionalists, Orthodox Jews, but among the uh, among the secular Jews also, we have some people who are against uh, Zionism. When I am saying about Zionism, that means the hardline Zionism, they, they say, what is the, this uh, type of uh, things that you are talking about, sac that, that means this stone is sacred or not sacred, you're creating problem. So the secular people say, we have many lands, like any other city, like any other country, we have many lands, we have enough land, why you are creating problems? So we have some secular Jews they don't, they say it is unnecessary problems. So if you talk about the sacred land, they are not happy. They say this is the main problem that we have today, that means for Israel. Israel can live in peace with others. Without problems, if you forget that this land is sacred, this uh, stone is sacred, so the secular nobility, they are not agree with this. So we have among the uh, uh, Jews, we have secular Jews, we have uh, traditional Jews, which they are not, they are opposing the uh, aim and objective that normally the hardline Zionists have. So they say we can live together like any other countries and build our temple in other places. You can have a, have a huge temple in other places while you insist that we have to destroy this most, for example. So this creates problem. So I just wanted to say that we have, we have to differentiate between Judaism or Jewish and Zionism, because Zionism is a nationalist, political, and religious. So these three, point, three things together made uh, Zionism. Religion, uh, nationalism, that means the ethnicity, the Jews, and also uh, political issue. So these three together make Zionism, which 
many, uh, for example, uh, Jewish people, the traditionals, they say, uh, say Zionism is not part of Judaism. So as in the slogan, you can say Judaism rejects Zionism. Now I am going to the last part. It talk about the, the UN role at the crossroad of faith and global diplomacy. So what we have to do, that means this is the, this is the problem that no uh, international law, international body, they have how to solve the problems. hot issue for uh, UN, for General Assembly, for Security Council. You just see the number of records. Just I was searching. I was searching in the library, the uh, UN library, digital library, you can search also. I searched some word, Jerusalem. Record is 6,542 record we have. If you search, the city of Jerusalem, 152. Uh, status of uh, uh, Jerusalem, 615. So you can see the quotes, two, uh, more than 2,000. Then Al-Quds, because it's an Arabic word, it, is, it has a uh, eight record. So you can see all these uh, keyboard which I have uh, searched, UN and Middle East and all these things, you see, from this record, you can understand that it is a very hot issue for UN, General Assembly, and for Security Council. It's a very hot issue. And today you have many records. I don't think that we have many such issue in international record. Because from, uh, from 1948 uh, or 47, this issue is still is continuing for 70 years. So when you see this, uh, this, this much of record, it is not surprising because it is the 70 years or sometimes 100 years of problems. So what is the opinion of uh, General Assembly? First, I have to tell you, General Assembly normally issue, uh, General Assembly normally issues Declaration. Declaration, uh, though it, this one has more people inside General Assembly, they have more representative of people, of the, of the uh, representative of the countries. But when they issue any declaration, it is not obligatory. It is not binding. It is like a recommendation. But uh, Security Council, Security Council, though the number is less, since the five member of the uh, assembly, what is general, uh, five member of uh, Security Council are permanent member of Security Council, so always they are permanent member, and the other members also changing from the time to time. So whenever they issue resolution, resolution is issued normally by, uh, then, uh, by uh, security council. That is binding. That means you have to follow. Every country should follow. It is obligatory. It is not like a general assembly declaration. In fact, normally they call for two state, two state uh, separately for Palestinian and Jews. Normally, it is their uh, ideal, and it, uh, and uh, Jerusalem should be international city and should be have a, a special administration, which Muslim also are not agree, Palestinian also not agree, Muslim also not agree, and Israel also is not agree. With administration internationally should be administrated. None of them are agree. But anyhow, in general assembly, it is passed like that. And still the uh, Security Council also, they are following two states 
which it has uh, none, none of the none of them none of the parties are happy with this suggestion. Negotiation is going on, and mostly they say, please follow international law. So they emphasize on this issue. Please follow, please follow uh, Security Council uh, decision. So always they recommend, but they uh, unfortunately mostly <laughs> I have to say Israel does not follow. We have a uh, uh, UN Security Council. Uh, one of the, some of, I, I have put three uh, resolution. I told you a resolution is binding. And uh, these three re resolution talking about two state. And one of the thing that it's emphasized, they say immediate, immediate uh, uh, remove of occupation. That what anyhow Israel is resisting for more than uh, almost for 75 years, uh, they are resisting. They don't want to remove the occupation. Many lands, according to international law and according to the Security Council, um, uh, it is occupied, but they are not ready to uh, to free. And also, you the problem that they have they make also many town and uh, uh, buildings which it is against Security Council, and normally the, uh, Israel uh, continue to build more and more town and also bring other uh, Jews from all parts of the world to live over there. And you can see when there was a, this music, uh, music festival, you can see that many people uh, over there uh, maybe killed or maybe arrested um, because they were settled in the occupied land. So this is the problem it, because you can see that some people are from this country, from France, from America, from other places because that is the occupied land and many Jews came and occupied uh, uh, that uh, area. So you can see that many people. Has, so in general, in general, whether assembly or whether secure, security council, they say they are follow, they are uh, passed that we should have two states, this is the solution, international law, two states, uh, and that means Palestinian state and also uh, Israeli state. So two separate states we should have independent. Second, uh, Jerusalem should be the international city and also administrated in the, uh, administration should be internationally under the uh, special uh, administration, which nobody, I told you, agree. Uh, and uh, they, should, they always talk that you have to uh, observe the international law and resolution and also declaration of international law. And also always they talk about diplomacy, that keep uh, having a diplomacy. So by this, I can just tell you that first part of my presentation was about the uh, in, uh, historical and, uh, and religious background. The second part, I talk about their political activities at the international level. And the third part, I talk about the position of international, uh, what is that, the uh, Maqdas and international law, security council, and everything. So by, by this, just I conclude my presentation. And thank you so much for listening.